So welcome back to our discussion of iterator adapters. We've already talked about the various inserter iterator adapters like back inserter, front inserter, and inserter. And now we're going to turn our attention to a very interesting iterator adapter called a reverse iterator. And basically what reverse iterators do is they can be used to walk backwards through ranges from a container. And there are two types of reverse iterators. Reverse iterator, which only goes backwards to the, to the data. And then there's also something called reverse bidirectional iterator, which can go backwards and forwards. These iterators can be can created a couple different ways. There's a default constructor or a single argument constructor. But most commonly, they're created by using the rbegin and rend factory methods that are defined on STL containers. Here are some of the operations that are supported on reverse iteration. One is the dereference operator, operator star, and that returns a reference to the current item, which is the value that's being pointed to. And there's a few little tricks that have to be done under the hood to make this work properly. Then there's also various plus plus and minus minus operations. And what's interesting about these is that plus plus on a reverse iterator actually advances the iterator to the previous item. So it really does a minus minus on the underlying range it's adapting. And then it returns a reference to that item. And same thing holds true for minus minus. Minus minus actually does a plus plus. So therefore, when you go forwards by plus plus, you're actually going backwards and vice versa. And then there's also the normal complement of equality and inequality operations. So let's take a look at an example, then we'll use this to illustrate various ways of being able to access reverse iterators. So we're going to have ourselves a deck, which is defined to have 10 numbers, 0 through 9, as you can see here. And then what we do is we use the copy algorithm. And of course, you recall copy goes from the beginning to the end by using the plus plus operation, except now we're going to give it R begin and R end. So every container in STL has R begin and R end methods that complement the begin and end methods. And you can see here that the R begin and R end methods return reverse iterators, whereas the normal begin and end methods return iterators that will be forwards iterators. So here's what happens when you call R begin. It goes ahead and makes a reverse iterator to encapsulate the end. So you actually get a reverse iterator to the end. And likewise, if you call R end, you get a reverse iterator to the beginning. So that's kind of funny. It's sort of like bizarro world where everything's backwards. We'll take a closer look at reverse iterator here in a second and actually see how it's implemented. So when we get R begin and R end, copy goes through doing plus, plus, plus. But underneath the hood, as we'll see, reverse iterator is actually doing minus, minus and uh, making things go backwards. So there's other ways of being able to get reverse iterators. R begin and R end is the most common way of doing things. But you can also explicitly get a reverse iterator. So here's a case where we're wrapping the deck iterator and we're encapsulating it in the context of a reverse iterator. So you can see here that we're going to say a deck dot end, which is going to give us an iterator to the end of the range. And we're going to call that R first. And then we're going to encapsulate it in a reverse iterator that's using deck iterator as the underlying iterator. And then we do the same thing for R last. That's also a reverse iterator for a deck iterator. And in this case, we're going to give it a deck begin. So let's go and have a little fun and take a look at the reverse iterator class. So here you can see that we've got reverse iterator, which is an iterator as usual. And underneath the hood, it's going to uh, essentially stash away the iterator to the current element. And that's the thing that we're really iterating over, but going backwards. And then if you take a look down here, you can see the various operations. For example, let's look at plus plus. So here's operator plus plus. This is the way of being able to advance by one. Well, advancing on a reverse iterator actually involves decrementing it by one and then returning the star this, returning the object by reference. Likewise, the minus minus operation ends up incrementing the iterator by one and then returning a reference to the object. So you can see that everything's done backwards through this adaptation mechanism. One of the most important operations to understand is operation dereference or the star operator. And you can see here what this does is this goes ahead and makes a temporary 
copy of the current iterator. And then it goes ahead and it decrements that temporary copy by one and then dereferences it. And it needs to do this, of course, because as I'm sure you recall, the end of an iterator range is always one past the actual last element that's in the range. So in this case, we have to make a temporary, decrement the te temporary iterator and then dereference it so we don't go in the wrong place. So that's what operator star does. And that also, of course, um, well, so that'll work just fine. And you'll notice that that doesn't change current. Current stays where it is, and we only go ahead and decrement a copy of current. So it can be called multiple times and not break. Okay, so that's basically what the reverse iterators are implemented as. Now that we've got ourselves a reverse iterator to the end, which we call our first, and a reverse iterator to the beginning, which we call our last, now we can use copy to go from our first to our last. And this code will behave exactly like the code did up here. In fact, under the hood, our begin and our end do exactly what I just showed you, except I did it explicitly here just to make the point. And then finally, there's yet another method, this one called reverse copy. And in here, we give it begin and end. And let's go see if we can find reverse copy. So you'll see that reverse copy goes backwards through a range, but it doesn't use reverse iterators, instead it uses the old trick of going from beginning to end, but then accessing the end iterator appropriately minus minus first, and then dereferenced and copied into the result. So that doesn't actually use reverse iterators, but it gets the same effect of going backwards. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what uh, we get when we run this code. As you can see here, we have the contents printed backwards three different ways. So of course, the data that was originally given, as you'll see here when I bring this down, is zero through nine. And then over here, you can see that we reversed it using R begin R end implicitly creating reverse iterators by using explicit creation of reverse iterators. And then finally, by doing reverse copy. So those are three quasi different ways of being able to access the elements in a range backwards. And of course, the other thing that it shows here is how reverse iterators work, which are an adapter that encapsulates an iterator. 